Thus the knot in the heart is pierced, and all misgivings are cut to pieces. The chain of fruitive actions is terminated when one sees the self as master. Please repeat. Thus the knot in the heart 
does he love in the heart? Is pierced. He's pierced. Yes. And all misgivings, and all misgivings are cut to pieces. Are cut, cut to pieces. pieces. The chain of fruitive actions. The chain of fruitive actions is terminated. Is terminated. When one sees the self. When one sees the self as master. As master. Purport by it. His divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shurupad. Attaining scientific knowledge of the personality of Godhead means seeing one's own self simultaneously. As far as the identity of the living being, the spirit soul, is concerned, there are a number of speculations and misgivings. The materialist does not believe in the existence of the spirit self. And empiric philosophers believe in the impersonal feature of the whole spirit without individuality of the living being. But the transcendentalists affirm that the soul and the super-soul are two different identities, qualitatively one, but quantitatively different. There are many other theories, but all these different speculations are at once cleared off as soon as Sri Krishna is realized in truth by the process of bhakti yoga. Sri Krishna is like the sun and the materialistic speculations about the absolute truth are like the darkest midnight. As soon as the Krishna sun is arisen within one's heart, the darkness of materialistic speculations about the absolute truth and the living beings is at once cleared off. In the presence of the sun, the darkness cannot stand, and the relative truths that were hidden within the dense darkness of ignorance become clearly manifested by the mercy of Krishna, who is residing in everyone's heart as the super soul. In the Bhagavad Gita 10.11, the Lord says that in order to show special favor to his pure devotees, he personally eradicates the dense darkness of all misgivings by switching on the light of pure knowledge within the heart of a devotee. Therefore, because of the personality of Godhead's taking charge of illuminating the heart of his devotee, certainly a devotee engaged in his service in transcendental love cannot remain in darkness. He comes to know everything of the absolute and the relative truths. The devotee cannot remain in darkness and the devotee cannot remain in darkness and because a devotee is enlightened by the personality of Godhead, his knowledge is certainly perfect. This is not the case for those who speculate on the absolute truth by dint of their own limited power of approach. Perfect knowledge is called parampara or deductive knowledge coming down from the authority to the submissive oral receiver who is bona fide by, act, by service and surrender. One cannot challenge the authority of the Supreme and know him also at the same time. He receives the right of not being exposed to such a challenging spirit of an insignificant spark of the whole, a spark 
subject to the control of illusory energy. The devotees are submissive and therefore the transcendental knowledge descends from the personality of Godhead to Brahma and from Brahma to his sons and disciples in succession. This process is helped by the super soul within each devotee. That is the perfect way of learning transcendental knowledge. This enlightenment perfectly enables a devotee to distinguish spirit from matter because the knot of spirit and matter is untied by the Lord. This knot is called ahankar and it falsely obliges a living being to become identified with matter. As soon as this knot is loosened, therefore, all the clouds of doubt are at once cleared off. One sees his master and fully engages himself in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, making a full termination of the chain of fruitive action. In material existence, a living being creates his own chain of fruitive work and enjoys the good and bad effects of those actions, life after life. But as soon as he engages himself in the loving service of the Lord, he at once becomes free from the chain of karma. His action no longer creates any reaction. Om Magyana Timiram Dasya Vyananjana Shavakaya Chakshurun Nilitanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Vanchakalpata Rubyasya Kripasindu Vayevacha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama So we're hearing Sutta Goswami speak to the sages in Nanyasharanya and he's describing to them the process of devotional service. We heard yesterday how devotee, after they're free from passion and ignorance, they come to the level of goodness. And now we're hearing what happens after you come to the level of goodness. Right? Then the, you, what we have to do is we have to purify the heart. We have to get rid of this ahankar, right? What's called the knot in the heart, right? We want, it's meant, he describes here, vidaya. Vidaya. Vidaya hmm. ah. vidaya grantis, right? Cutting. The knot. The knot in the heart is pierced and the misgivings are cut to pieces. Misgivings. The doubts. Misgivings are like doubts. So Krishna is Madhusudan, the killer of the, the destroyer of doubts. Doubts are like the demon. Just as Krishna destroyed, the, killed the demon Madhu, Krishna can also remove the doubts in the heart. The doubt in the heart, oh, I, I don't know if this process can work, I don't know if it's actually worthwhile, am I wasting my time? You know, we have many doubts about Krishna consciousness sometimes. Sometimes we think, oh, I could be doing more important things with myself, like that. So the different doubts, they have to all be removed. This is all 
than the realm of the ahankar, because we are ahankar is this attachment to the body, attachment to the material energy, and we have to purify that ahankar. The real ahankar is to think of ourselves as a servant of Krishna. So. Uh, described here, by the process of devotional service, all these doubts in the heart destroyed almost to nil. The, the chain of primitive action is terminated. The, fruit, the chain of primitive action, the chain of karma, our karma, because of our karma we're, we, we're placed into situations and we're performing different activities, getting certain results. This is our karma, right? Somebody's got good karma, and somebody's got bad karma. You know, because of our karma, we get a certain amount of wealth, we get a certain amount of success. Because of our karma, we get certain diseases, we get certain health problems, different social problems. This is all our karma. But when we take shelter of Krishna, then that karma is just all finished, it's all removed. Devotees are not under the laws of karma, devotees take shelter of Krishna. So it's a big difference, right? Mentioned here that one sees the self as master. And the self, of course, means the soul not just simply the soul, but the super soul. We see Krishna, the Lord in the heart, as the master, and we become surrendered to Him. But, of course, not everybody is able to understand this. So, Prabhupada begins the purport here. He talks how there is, you've got people who are materialists, they don't believe in any soul, and you, you, they just simply want to enjoy the material world. And then you've got this, the jnanis, the speculators, who try to understand the soul by their mind, the senses. So, the karmis, they don't believe in the soul. They think, they think life and time and death, everything is finished. And the jnanis, they're thinking that, well, the same soul is in everyone, we're all one, and ultimately the goal is to merge. They're thinking about merging, entering into the oneness, or the nothingness. So, of course, we're preaching against that. The devotee is the real transcendentalist. Lord Chaitanya defeats these atheistic and impersonal philosophies. Right? The, the jnanis, they believe in the soul, but they think that it's the same soul everywhere, all-pervading one. The I am you, and you are me, and we are all one. This is the impersonalist jargon. They see like that. But devotee understands his relationship with Krishna. So Prabhupada quotes from Bhagavad Gita, it says that, how Krishna acts on the heart of the devotee. When the devotee renders a little service, Krishna says, uh, out of compassion for them, I destroy the darkness born of ignorance with the lamp of knowledge. So that the Krishna from the heart, he gives the knowledge by which we can understand him. Not just simply understand that we're the soul, but that we have a relationship Krishna. And when we, when we take that position to become the humble servant of Krishna, then Krishna reveals everything to us. So Prabhupada particularly is stressing here, the, uh, uh, he's, he talks of the importance of humility, the, the, the mood of surrendering. He said, Prabhupada said, you cannot challenge the authority. The jnanis and the, these kind of people, they, they will challenge the authority, the supremacy of Krishna. Right? So Krishna says, I am never manifest to the foolish and the unintelligent. 
So these kind of people, they cannot know Krishna. Just like in the, in the Bhagavad Gita also, where it says, try to learn the truth. Chapter 4, 34. Try to learn the truth by approaching the spiritual teacher. But, Prabhupada then says, you, you approach the teacher, you have to, you cannot challenge, the, you're not supposed to challenge, but we're supposed to approach submissively. Right? Tadvidi pranipatena. First we have to submit ourselves, surrender ourselves, and then put questions. We shouldn't come challenging to the spiritual teacher. That challenging spirit is not appreciated by Krishna. Krishna likes to see humility, the genuine desire to want to know the absolute truth. If we, but if we come challenging, thinking that we know everything, then we cannot, we're not qualified to hear. So, well, we, we, have to, we have to understand what should be the proper mood in approaching the spiritual teacher and how to get this knowledge to become enlightened. Uh, we want to understand properly our relationship with the Lord. Now, the, the generally the jnanis, the impersonalists, they're simply thinking that it's all one. That there's only the paramatma, there's only the Lord in the heart, and we are all that one. So they, they don't surrender, they don't submit to anyone. They say, Right? They think we are that, we are all, but they're thinking we are all the Supreme or we are all the Brahman, but they forget that there is a, a Supreme Brahman, Krishna is the Para Brahman. So we are subordinate, we are under him. So this is difficult for the impersonalists to understand. To try to change the thinking of the impersonalists is very difficult because they're very proud of their knowledge. They're proud of their position. They don't want to submit to someone. So the result is they simply become attached to their they, they still have the big ego. They, have, they still have that strong I sense of identity. But pure devotional service requires that we should give up all of these designations, right? Rupa Goswami describes pure devotional service. Sarvopadi vivnir muktam, tat parat vena nirmalam, rishikesha rishikena sevanam, bhakti right? Sarvupadi, upadi means designations, thinking, I am so many things, right? Position, I am, I am, you don't know who I am, you know, like this. So this is upadis, designate. So you have sarv upadi vinir mukta, devote, to take up devotional service. You have to give up these, ident these identities, this illusion of thinking I'm something, I'm some position, I have some identity in the material world. This is all of our identity, this is us identifying with matter, with the material energy. And because we identify with matter, so we also carry with us the, the karma. We're entangled in the material energy, we get a lot of karma. But when we submit ourselves fully to Krishna, then we get free of karma. There's a nice verse, Lord Brahma. In the, go, in the Brahma Samhita, he says, Yas Vendra Gopam Atta Vendra Mahoswa Karma Bandha Nurupa Palabhajanam Apanoti Karmani Nirdahati Kintu Chabakti Bhajam Govindam Adipursam Tamam Bhajami This verse, Lord Brahma is describing how everyone suffering and enjoying their karma. Indra, 
the king of heaven to the Indra Gopa, the tiniest germ that bears the name Indra Gopa. They're all we're all suffering and enjoying the results of our previous performed activity. But when we surrender to Govinda, Krishna, then he burns up all the past karma. All the all this karma is all removed by, by devotional service. Devotional service has that effect. When we actually take up service to Krishna, we get free of all that karma. So we, we should understand, you know, people think, oh, well, I'm a devotee, why do I still suffer? I get suffering. But we should understand that suffering is not karma because we have taken shelter of Krishna. So that suffering which we get, it can be the arrangement of Krishna. Krishna gives us some token suffering just to help us to become more serious and more steady in our devotion. The suffering of a devotee is not like the suffering of a normal person. Ordinary people, they suffer due to their karma, but devotees don't have karma. The devotees suffer, we suffer, but it's not karma. It's, it's for our purification, the arrangement of Krishna. We can enjoy the suffering. <laughs> we enjoy the suffering. Yeah. yeah. Because with suffering we think more of Krishna. We take better shelter of Krishna. Queen Kunti also said like that. Vipada Shantutashasvat Tatra Tatra Jagadgaro Babato Dashanam Yajat Apunar Bhavanashana. Queen Kunti said, I wish all these calamities will happen again and again. Kunti had a lot of calamities, a lot of suffering in her life. So many things, right? Their house was set on fire, they lost all their money gambling, their wife was disgraced, Dropani they tried to strip her naked. So many things happened. Bim was given poison. So many things happened, so many problems. Then the war, Kurukshitra war. But Queen Kunti says, let all the suffering happen again and again. Because when I'm in these situations, then it's easy for me to think of Krishna. So the difficulties which come, they make it easier for us to absorb the mind in Krishna. Of course, you don't have to have difficulties to think of Krishna. You can be Krishna conscious without difficulties. But often the difficulties make us more serious. We become more serious. We become very careful, attentive. Just like all oh, the devotees in Mumbai, one, one day there was an earthquake. In the night, there was a big earthquake. The building was shaking. All the devotees rushed out the building, and they were all, it was the middle of the night, and they were all chanting. They said it was the best japa they ever did. <laughs> the best japa because you know we don't know what's <laughs> going to happen the ground may open up and swallow everybody they may all die the whole thing you know whole building will crash on everybody they were chanting Hare Krishna Hare. you know they were very serious in their chanting so when we're in these situations life threatening situations we become very careful very conscious to chant and when we're not like when our life is not threatened, then we're enjoying, right? Oh yes. I have my nice home, my nice life here in the material world. I'm happy. I'm comfortable. My nice children, my beautiful wife, everything is there. I'm enjoying. But when when things go wrong, then we, oh Krishna, oh Krishna help me. 
they say there's a saying in India they say when we're when I'm happy I think of my gold and when I'm in trouble I think of God <laughs> so sometimes trouble is an impetus it helps us to become Krishna conscious Krishna also warns in Bhagavad Gita not to be attached to the to the luxuries of life. Bhogaishvarya prasakta nam thaya parita chetasam vaya vasayatmika bodhi samadona vidhi. In the minds of those who are attached to material opulence and sense gratification, then the determination for devotional service will not be there. So, very important for us, is it? You can have opulence, but don't be attached to it. Of course. <laughs> oh, I have, you know, it's easy to say, it's another thing. I'm not a guy. <laughs> but, you know, it is, it's, it's difficult. It's like a crocodile, you know, it bites you and pulls you on. <laughs> To be surrounded, to live in luxury and not be attached. You can lose everything. Just like I was talking about Bali Maharaj last night. Bali Maharaj had that situation. He had everything. Controlling heaven. The next minute he lost everything. And Lord Nishringadev came, he killed Haranyi Kashipu. Haranyi Kashipu also, he had everything. He's big, powerful, everybody worshipping him. And then Lord Nishringadev came and finished him. Lost everything. You know? So you can lose everything very quickly. You can lose everything. So very difficult. Ambani, right? The big man yeah. in India. Yeah. The big man. Very rich, very powerful. Yeah. Next man. Next more money is gone. Hard. Hard. Leave everything behind, right? Leave it for the sons to fight over. <laughs> and it's the material world. So that's all karma. But if we surrender to Krishna, then it's a very different arrangement. Because the devotee is under the control of Krishna. He sees the hand of Krishna in everything. Krishna gives and Krishna takes. Prabhupada said, God is like someone with ten arms. Someone with ten arms, if they want to give you, they can give you so much. And if they want to take, they can take also so much. Because they have ten arms, we only have two. So we have to recognize who is the master, who is the controller. You often we are thinking, oh, I'm the mess. I'm, 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 I'm in charge. I know what. Who is the real master? You know, one moment you can be very healthy, the next moment you cannot even move your arm. You know, people get these strokes, they get these uh, heart attacks and things, health problems. Come very suddenly. One minute you can be very healthy, next minute you're you're helpless. You cannot move. You're in the wheelchair, totally dependent on others. Very difficult situation. It's all happening under the working of material nature. But a devotee takes shelter of the spiritual nature, takes shelter of Krishna. So the similar things happen. Suffering is still there. Difficulties are still there. But it's in a different category. Just like the Pandavas, they suffered a lot. But they never gave up their faith in Krishna. The difficulties helped them to, rem to remember Krishna. So 
So this this point, of course, comes out again and again in relation to the great devotees. When Maharaj Parikshit got cursed, he gave up everything to go and hear Srimad Bhagavatam. When Maharaj Ambarish was in difficulty due to the Rasamuni, he simply took shelter of Krishna. So, of course, to be able to take shelter of Krishna, we have to get rid of that ignorance from the heart. The ignorance in the heart is thinking, I can do it. I don't need Krishna. I can do it myself. I know what I'm doing. Huh? So one sees the self as master. One sees the self. That, that self, the, the Lord in the heart, is the real master. How do we know that we're taking direction from the heart? That's important to understand. That our heart is not so pure. We may think the heart is telling. Krishna from the heart told me, we have to confirm with sadhu, shastra and guru. It's not just simply be guided by the heart. We must follow sadhu, shastra and guru. Whatever is from the heart is okay, but you have to also consult with sadhu, shastra and guru. You cannot just simply depend on the heart. My Krishna and the heart told me I can smoke cigarettes. Krishna and the heart told me I don't need to get up in the morning. Krishna and the heart told me I, I should write Bhagavad Gita. We need a new Bhagavad Gita. I should write a new Bhagavad Gita. We had one lady in China, right? Remember that in Li Hong? Krishna and the heart told her, write a new Bhagavad Gita. This Bhagavad Gita is too old. have to confirm. Sadhu, Shastra, and Guru, and we get the real truth, understand the truth of it. Okay, any questions? So, Maharaj, in this verse, uh, the three dimensions one is uh, devotee, mm -hmm. the other one is a yogi, the other one is jnani. jnani. Uh -huh. Three levels of of reaching, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, when you reach in these three levels, I think people go through these stages. Yeah. Okay. So when you when you are going for the devotees, say first thing is the is renounce yourself as a humble servant of the Lord. You are directly in. in of the Lordship. That's the Bhakta. Right? And, the, and the other thing that comes out here is uh, you don't uh, everybody suffers. The devotee too suffers. But his vision of suffering is completely different from that of the material. His uh, realization I mean is different. So, the Bhakta takes realize, uh, I mean, uh, suffering voluntarily. His, his, uh, his thinking is slightly different from the materials. Right. So that makes a lot of difference within uh, in, 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 in the individual. I think that's, that's the biggest thing. That yeah, it's how we see everything, which is important. So a devotee in Krishna consciousness, he sees everything in relation to Krishna. The, the suffering and the, and the rejoicing, he sees it all in relation to Krishna. The happiness and the distress, it's all in relation to Krishna. But the other people, they have a different yeah, he thinks it's all illusion, nothing is real. <laughs> right? It's all yeah. Maya. It's all illusion. And 
and the devot and the and the the karmi thinks I did it. The karmi, the the non-devot, the materialist thinks I did it by my heart. And when they're in difficulty, when the karma is suffering, then they blame everybody. It's their fault. They did it. They did this to me. They were jealous of me. They were envious of me. So they did this to me. We get sick. Somebody cursed me. Because they didn't want me to be healthy, so they put this curse on me. <laughs> you get people like that. So we have to try to develop consciousness, the proper consciousness, to see everything in relation to Krishna. Is it true that we can be identified the people when they're in the suffering? Huh? We can be identified the people, uh, the, the, the devotees or karmi in the, when they're suffering? Well, sometimes people don't like to admit their suffering. Some people, they'll, they'll there was, there was one devotee, his mother came to see Prabhupada. And she came to see Prabhupada and she would say, Oh, Swami, it is so hot today. Oh, it's so hot. So Prabhupada began to speak about suffering, about how much suffering there is in the world. And then she said, Oh, I don't think I'm suffering. I don't think there's suffering. And Prabhupada said, Well, just two minutes ago, you were suffering. You were telling me how you were suffering. Now you're saying you're not suffering. like that. People are suffering sometimes they won't admit it. They won't admit how much suffering is there. But in this place is already stated as Dukkali. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's full of that. Yeah, the Bhagavad Gita Krishna said this world is Dukalaya. Mamupaichapuna Dukalayam Ashasu. The yogis don't come back to this world. The yogis in devotion don't come back to this world because they know this world to be a temporary place of misery. Dukalaya. Place of misery, suffering. It's the nature of this world. But we, we're covering up the suffering. We put our air conditioner in, we get our car to go around in, and we cover up the suffering, right? We think, oh, not so bad, you know, everything's nice, how's everything? How's everything for go? Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> the man, baby, he's laying on the hospital bed, he's covered with bandages, head to foot, everything's in plaster, you know, all bones are broken. And the friend comes and says, how are you, Prabhu? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Conditioning. <laughs> Conditioning. <clears throat> Your friend may be put in the jail and you go to visit him in the prison. How are you, Prabhu? Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you lock him in the jail and just tell him, oh, not so bad. I'll get out soon. No. Like that. So people are not very. It's not very easy sometimes to convince people how they're suffering. That they need to do something about it. And they just, mm -hmm. So people don't worry. They, they, don't, they all know. Everybody knows we're going to die. Everybody knows we have to get old. We have to get disease. We have to die. Nobody doing anything about it. They're thinking, oh, doctor will help me. My family members will save me. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I'm so a disciple, I can give something.